classroom libraries are one of the main areas in an elementary classroom. In this video, I'm sharing tips on how to organize your classroom library, how to pick the location of your classroom library, and some of the best places to buy books in order to build your library. If you're new here, I'm Rachel Vincent, and I share tips on how to run an effective and efficient classroom so that you can get more done and still have time to teach. Let's talk about picking the location of your library in your classroom. Now, obviously, this is going to depend on what kind of classroom you have, what kind of space you have, how many students you have. So I can't necessarily say this is the place to do it, but here are some things to think about when you're choosing where your library is going to go. The number one thing is you're going to need shelves to put those books. Do you have built-in shelves? Do you have shelves that you need to bring in or get from Goodwill or purchase in order to build the area of your classroom library. You need a place for those books to go. I've done a variety of shelving over the years. I've had a really tall shelf. I've had shorter shelves. I've had built-in shelves. And each year it kind of looks a little bit different in my classroom library. The next thing you really wanna think about is the traffic flow of your classroom. Where can you put your library where people can stop and shop for books, look for books, that's not going to disrupt the flow of students moving around and getting around your classroom. One of the things I've done when my space is limited is I have separated the library shelves. So I have separated it by fiction books in one area, chapter books in another, nonfiction in another, and this helps instead of having a bunch of students in one area in the classroom looking for books, they're kind of spread around the classroom in First of all, helps with classroom management, but also with that traffic flow of students moving around the classroom. When I have the space in the classroom, I do like to put it all together because I like to create a cozy area. And so one of the ways to do that is with a rug or cushions or pillows, or even I have put my classroom couch in the library before and just created sort of a little space for students not only to find books, but to sit and read. There have been many times during the classroom set at the beginning of the year where I have put the classroom library in one area and as students came into the classroom and we started doing things, realized that that was not the best location and then I moved it. So don't feel like once you have it in that spot, that's the only place you can go. Try different areas. How you organize your classroom library is really up to you. There are many different ways and I have tried many different ways. Let me know in the comments below, how do you organize your classroom library? Since I first started teaching, I had my library organized into baskets and bins. Now how those baskets and bins were organized changed over the years, but that is a really easy way to do it. There are lots of places you can get bins. You can get them from the Dollar Tree, but I do know that Dollar Tree baskets are not as sturdy and therefore will break as students are using them over and over again. So I do suggest that you invest in some better quality baskets. Again, there are many different ways to organize those baskets. You can organize them by your picture books, seasonal books, chapter books, nonfiction books. One of the things that I am personally moving towards and I have seen a lot of people move towards is no longer using baskets and organizing books by author's last name. I started doing this with my chapter books about six years ago and I have really notice that students actually read more books than just having them in different baskets by series. I continue to have my picture books and my nonfiction books organized by genre and topic. However, this coming school year, I am planning to take away the baskets and actually organize those by author's last name as well. With organization also comes showing your students how to use the classroom library and how it is organized in order for them to put books back where they belong. Now, to be completely honest, there are students who, no matter how easy the system is, they just throw a book in a basket and move on. And so I do have classroom librarians that help to put books back where they go. The easiest way I have found for books to get back in the right location is to number each basket and then put the same number on the book. That is the number one way that students get books back to the right location. Now using author's last names, I actually use the labels from Lessons with Laughter. Molly's labels are color coded and so students are able to sort of see what color to put the book back in instead of trying to pay attention to the author's last name. So real quick, let's talk about organizing books by the level they are. 
whether it's a guided reading level, an AR level, any kind of a leveling system. Levels are good for the teacher to know, but not necessarily the student. I do not organize any of my library books by level. However, I did work at a school that it was required for us to level. And even though I didn't agree with it, I was still required to do it. So in order to get around that, I took just a small portion of my classroom library and organized it by level. So I had a leveled shelf, if you will, and the rest of my books were organized by genre and topic. That way, if an administration or district officials came into my classroom and asked where my leveled library was, I could say they're right here on the shelf, but I also had it organized the way I wanted it to be organized because I knew that was more beneficial for students. So let's talk about where you can get books for relatively cheap so you can build your classroom library. I just finished year 18 and I am still building my classroom library. Yes, I have lots of books, but I const there are constantly new ones coming out. I constantly want to add and make sure that the books I have are quality books. They are representative of the students in my room and I am always looking for new books. The majority of my personal classroom library came from Scholastic. I religiously sent home those Scholastic flyers monthly for years. Now, I'll be quite honest, I haven't done it in the past couple years because I was kind of at capacity with my bookshelves. So I knew that if I wanted to bring in more books, I needed more shelves and I didn't really have the space for that. So I haven't sent them home as often. Using Scholastic is a great way because you earn all those points and then you can use those points to get books for your library. You, they also have deals, dollar deals, $2 deals where you can get good quality books for your library. There are some years where parents will hardly spend any money on the books and then there are some years where they spend tons of money and you just never know. So that is why I am consistent with sending home those flyers to earn those points. Another great way to get books for your classroom library is to write donors choose projects. Having a smaller price point donors choose actually can get funded quicker than having the high priced items. And so the easiest way to do that is think about a collection of books. Is there a series of books you want to write a project for? Is there a month, a special month or holiday that you want to write them for? Is there a author study you want to do some for? Is there a genre or topic that you want to add to your library? Write those smaller write several of them and get those funded for your classroom. Libraries are always going through their books and weeding out books of their collection. And so often you can get those books for free. I know school libraries do it all the time, but public libraries do it as well. If you're following your local library on social media, they will post when they're having these book sales and you can get great quality books for cheap. Facebook is a great place to get high interest books for your students. Oftentimes parents are selling books that their children read once so they're in really good condition and they're selling them to declutter their house and playrooms and things like that. So check Marketplace for sure, but also look for local Facebook groups that are like buy, trade, sell type groups. I know in my area there's actually an upstate teachers group for South Carolina and uh, there are teachers all the time who are retiring or changing careers, so they're selling their classroom libraries and you can get lots of books for really cheap. Of course, there are always places like garage sales, Goodwill, things like that. Just visit regularly and you will find books to build your library. The last three places I wanted to share with you are actually websites where you can get books at a discounted price. The first website I wanted to show you is Half priced books and you can easily search up here when you click on books and you have all the different subjects. My favorite place to look for books is to go to children's fiction, but you can also look for under and you have student ages. So if I click my age range for fourth graders and it will take you to all of the different books for students that age. So here's just an example of some of the books. This is in the nine to 12 category. You can obviously narrow your search, look for books under a certain price, but it's just a great place to get books for a low cost. The next website is thriftbooks.com. You can click here again here on books and they have children's section. Just click 
shop all to kind of get a variety of it. There are some decent prices for books if you are looking to build your classroom library. And the last website is First Book Marketplace. It is fbmarketplace.org where you can again shop by age, shop by the type of book. So if you are looking to add historical fiction books to your library collection, you can find books for a relatively low price here and you can see how much you would save by going through this website. Classroom libraries are one of those things that will evolve and change over time. Like I said, I just finished my 18th year and I'm already planning on revamping my entire classroom library organization. Slowly over the past five or so years, I've been thinking about the kinds of books that I bring in, making sure they're high quality, making sure they're diverse and representative of my students, but also making sure my students are seeing other people's perspectives in the books they read. Building your classroom library is a perfect summer task. If you're curious about how to plan out your summer to get some of that school stuff done and still have time for all those fun things, then check out the video that's on your screen now and I will walk you through the process of planning out your summer. I'll see you over there.